Did Russian electronic warfare attack SpaceX Starlink? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of focus and that is it. What do you think about that cup, guys? What do you think? It's the season, my favorite season of all. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. As I always say, talking tech, photo, video. Today is a tech day. It is a follow-up to yesterday's video. The title was something like Catastrophic SpaceX Starlink Outage in Ukraine. And Elon Musk was, let's say, called out for this outage. And we talked about that. And there was a couple of possibilities of what was going on here. And the one that I gravitated towards was the idea that the Ukrainian people or military pushed into or liberated about 55 miles of the Ukraine. And when they did, the movement into that area caused a blackout because SpaceX Starlink is blacking out any portion of the country that's not liberated. And once they liberated that area, of course, they would have to turn it on. So this was what my idea was. Now, of course, there's another side to it. Maybe it was the Russians that actually caused the blackout. And I did some more research on this, and I found an article over on, I think it's Euro Asia Times or something, and it was very plausible of what they were saying. And I want to bring it to your attention and see what you think about it. Because the last video got a lot of traffic. People were really interested in it. And a lot of people were interacting with it. So I want to add to it. But once again, on the other side of it, because there were people on both sides. Whenever you have war, it polarizes. You know, war is a bad thing no matter how you look at it. And just like I said in the last video, war is all about the two R's, right? Resources or religion. That's the majority of, I would say 90% of all war that have gone on since before Christ's time was always about either something that another country or another region has that you want, resources that you want to take from them, or religion. Because what I believe is not what you believe, but I don't care what you believe. I want you to believe what I believe, and that's it. And if you don't believe it, I'll kill you. Stupid, right? Pretty stupid. But this is how it's always been. Anyways, I'm going to also give this another shot because a lot of you guys said that this lapel mic was complete garbage and these things are not cheap. This is like a really expensive setup, all right? So I want to test it out again. And as you can see, it's right here. I put it a little bit closer to my mouth this time. Um, it's still in the same situation, the same setup. The receiver and the transmitter are about three and a half feet apart. So we're going to see what it sounds like. And if it still sounds bad, then tell me in the comments below. Besides commenting about this topic that we're going to be discussing, let me know what you think about this. Anyways, let me get into this article because I think that, like I said, their thoughts on this is definitely plausible. And I want you to tell me what you believe, which side of it. So the article starts out with, under the condition of anonymity, two government officials told the news outlet that soldiers encountered connectivity issues when they visited cities that had just been liberated from the Russian occupation. Since the liberation of some areas had not been announced, Experts speculate that the problem had been caused by SpaceX employees trying to prevent Russian military from using the technology, just like what I was saying yesterday. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, tweeted in response to an article, this operation has cost SpaceX $80 million and will exceed $100 million by the end of the year. Bad reporting by FT, FT being the Financial Times. I reported about this yesterday. This article falsely claims that Starlink terminals and service were paid for when only a small percentage have been. As for what's happening on the battlefield, that's classified. This had to do with him being called out, what was going on, why is the service down, and all the rest of this stuff, and that, hey, you know, we're paying for this, the government is paying for this, and it should be working, and 
no, the government hasn't been paying for this. They paid for, I believe I calculated about 9% of all of the terminals that are sitting on the ground over there in the Ukraine. So on the other hand, Russian media presents a dramatically different version. They claim that the Russian military decided to use the Tirada 2S satellite communication electronic jamming system against Starlink. There is not much information available about the system in public domain. It is believed that the development of the equipment began in 2001 when the requirement for a system emerged that could block satellite connections with ground-based terminals and transceivers on aircraft. The system may have seen several setbacks during its development phase due to economic sanctions imposed by the West, which forced the Russian's enterprises involved in the defense and space sector to move from importing to domestically producing electronic components. The Tirada was developed in the 46th Central Research Institute of the Russian Federation Ministry of Defense. And 16 years later, in 2017, the Institute declared that the entire program would soon be completed. The Tirada 2S is outfitted with specialized direction finding technology, which identifies the area in which a satellite signal operates. It is also possible that the machine's functionality will allow it to receive information from fixed radar stations. The system creates a directed interference that interferes with the satellite's transceiver. Nothing is destroyed there, but a thick veil completely denies the satellite the chance to receive a signal from the Earth. As a result, the interaction between the spacecraft and ground and air base stations is completely disabled. The regular satellite signal and even the combat ones such as military communication and surveillance satellites can be turned off. Russian experts believe that military satellites will be more exposed as automated systems attempt to overcome interference brought on by the Tirada 2S resulting in a greater battery drain and a heavy demand on the onboard power system. According to a military review publication, the Starlink system is theoretically one of the viable targets for Russian forces. Meanwhile, the article emphasized that Starlink is so effective that it serves as nearly a sole means of space communications for the Ukraine military units to ensure sustained communication, reconnaissance, and navigation. On the other hand, while Elon Musk's business acknowledges that Starlink satellite internet has been disrupted, they offer no answer to why it has happened. I went over to a website called Flight Radar 24. Now, this is a website that shows you where all aircraft are in the air. So it goes by the transponders on each aircraft. And as you can see here, when we bring up the region, all aircraft that's flying over either the Ukraine or Belarus, that whole area, their transponders are turned off, obviously so that they are less likely to be targeted. Now, can they still be targeted? Of course, but this makes them invisible to maps like this. Anyways, there's two answers here. Number one, Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink had their system blacked out in the region which was recently liberated and wasn't taken off the blackout list until they knew that they took it over. That's number one. Or number two, the Russian EW or electronic warfare device, this Tirada 2S actually worked and it took out SpaceX Starlink's connection. What the answer is there, I really don't know. I wanna know from you, what do you guys think? When you think about it a little bit, Elon Musk has played such a major role in this war. Starlink has been such a massive factor to how this war has been going. Now, I did get a few comments from yesterday's video stating that, you know, Starlink is actually helping to kill hundreds of Russian soldiers. And that's not deniable. I, I mean, I'm sure that probably is the case. But the other side of that, of course, is how many hundreds or maybe thousands of Ukrainian lives have been saved due to Starlink. So 
there's always a push and pull. There's always a yin and yang. There's a dark and there's a light. There's a white and black, right? And it constantly pulls and there eventually is a balance. And I have to say that once again, when I think about this, I believe, now I don't know what you believe. I believe that if it wasn't for Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink, and him taking on the initiative to send 15,000 of these kits to the Ukraine, I think the war would have been over many, many, many moons ago. I think the Ukraine would have fallen months ago. That's my personal opinion. Now, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Of course, it depends if you're on the Russian side or if you're on the Ukrainian side, whatever it is. But I definitely do believe that it is a major factor. And I really, I just hate to see when people will say, oh, you know, the service went down and why did it go down? And I want an explanation. It's like, what are you talking about? I mean, it's just, it's nice that he's even providing it, okay? And like I said, if he didn't provide it, who knows how many thousands of lives would have been lost on the Ukrainian side. So it's just, you know, I look at it as a humanitarian type of thing. He's helping out, but I see both sides of the story. You know, I really, really do. But I want to know what you think. What do you think? Is the EW or the electronic warfare of the Russians working? Is that Tarada... 2S actually doing its job or maybe another EW device, electronic warfare device? Or did Elon or SpaceX or Starlink did not turn on or reduce that blackout area into that region that was liberated or recently liberated? Which one is it? I don't know. I really don't know. But if it is that EW device, that electronic warfare device by Russia, there might be some major problems going to happen in Ukraine soon, because if they find that they can black out all communications, including Starlink, so that it blinds the Ukraine military 100% completely, doesn't look good. So anyways, guys, I want to know your thoughts on it. Tell me what you think about this, Mike. Tell me what you think about this subject. Down below, let's have this discussion. As always say, if you want more Starlink information, I did a whole Starlink playlist. Go take a look at it. It's about 80 or 90 videos. I got a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, what to do, what to buy, why to buy it, why not to buy it. There's a whole bunch of great information in there. So take a look at that Starlink playlist. Also, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for my hard work, there's a thank you button down there. You can click on that or even better, become a member of the channel. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.